passion is not enough. Smith's Note Summary 27, Book of the Day, So Good They Can't Ignore You by Cal Newport. Why Skills Trump Passion and the Quest for Work You Love. This book was a very interesting read. In a time where everyone is telling us to follow our passion and do what we love, the assistant professor of computer science at Georgetown University with a Ph.D. from MIT is saying the opposite. This book is based on a simple question Cal asked. How do people end up loving what they do? The book is broken down into essentially four sections that follow four primary rules to cultivate your career passion. Rule number one, don't follow your passion. Rule number two, the importance of skill. When you develop a skill and work to be an expert at that skill, you become so good they can't ignore you. Rule number three, the importance of control. One thing that I have seen and read about numerous times, which is a good example for this, is when a company takes their top salesman and promotes them to something like VP of sales or some other fancy title. By doing this, they remove that person from what they are best at. Rule number three, the importance of control, says to turn down that promotion because you are not a master of that craft. Rule number four, the importance of mission. Think small, act big. Take small steps to be the best and most sought after in your craft. Okay, now that we have the four rules laid out, let's talk about some of the other big ideas. Self-determination theory. I'm going to read straight from Wikipedia about SDT. Self-determination theory, SDT, is a macro theory of human motivation and personality concerning people's inherent growth tendencies and their innate psychological needs. It is concerned with the motivation behind the choices that people make without any external influence and interface. SDT focuses on the degree to which an individual's behavior is self-motivated and self-determined. It goes on to say that motivation requires three psychological needs be filled. Those are autonomy, competence, and relatedness. So SDT is a topic that can get really deep because it builds on many other studies done by other people. So I'm just going to explain each of the three needs and move forward with that. The rest of the studies really aren't important to this. The first need is autonomy. To have a high level of fulfillment, we need to be mostly in control of our day. Ideally, we want to be totally in control. And we need to be doing something that matters. That makes perfect sense. For instance, if you have direct interaction with three or four different bosses, all feuding for power, that can make your job terrible. Each one of those bosses is trying to overpower the other one with no concern for others, and that is a bad place to be. However, if you are working on a big project and know exactly what you'll be doing for a set period of time and know what the end goal is, even though it might be a ton of work, you actually experience less stress during those times. Certainty versus uncertainty is what it really boils down to. You know what you're doing, or you have no idea what your bosses are going to have you doing next. Competence. Competence is the feeling that you are good at what you do and the confidence to do it. Getting out of your comfort zone is tough for us all. Relatedness. We have to believe that the people we work with and for are on the same page and working toward a common goal. We also have to like the people that we deal with on a daily basis. Those are the three things. Notice there is nothing said about passion. No follow your dreams or do what you love. We'll talk about why next. Craftsman mindset versus the passion mindset. The passion mindset is what most people have. It is typically described as, how can I do something I love for just a few hours a day from my private beach? And that is such an odd concept. If we love doing something, we should want to do it all the time, right? It's like saying I found the perfect mate, and better yet, I devised a plan to only spend a few hours a day with them. How does that make sense? The craftsman mindset, on the other hand, is not a what can I get from the world mentality, but what can I give to the world as a driving force. And here's the thing. If you want to get good at something, you must have the craftsman mindset, which means 
You will put in thousands of hours to be an expert. The more you do something, the better you get at it. That part's obvious. But the more you do it, the more you start to think that it is your passion also. The last thing I want to talk about, and a very, very interesting idea, is career capital. When you think about that phrase, what comes to mind? For me, it is experience, and that is what the author is talking about also. I just never heard it presented like that. Career capital is an extremely valuable asset, but I don't think most of us realize that. If you take the craftsman approach, you'll put in a ton of work to acquire the skills and knowledge that you can later cash in for the job that you want. Those skills and knowledge, which is your career capital, are what the author calls rare and valuable. A certification or a degree is not rare, and common work experience is not valuable. If you try to follow your passion without experience, you're going to have a hard time succeeding. The author brings that up in another idea where he's talking about the right work not being as important as working right. So in closing, I will sum up the passion question like this. If you don't know what your passion is, become a craftsman of something you find interesting. If you do know your passion, you still need to become a craftsman so that you can be the best at your passion. Get the show notes at smithsnotes.com and don't forget to get your free audiobook from smithsbook.com. Talk to you tomorrow.